try to do this really hard problem. We got three points, A, B, and C. They're in this X, Y plane. Particle mass of A is, uh, is mass A is five grams, which is 0 0.005 kilograms. The other masses are as such, two, three, and four um, times the quantity of mass A. And then um, we're trying to figure out if mass D were placed somewhere on here, uh, how would we be able to get this in equilibrium with force of zero? Well, it, let's imagine where we think D might be. We've probably got a like a force vector or something like this, right? In this direction with the, with the B and the C, which means that the force of D would have to be, you know, somewhere over here, right? In order to get this to be somewhat equal. So this is where D would sure probably be. And now, we want to be thinking to ourselves, all right, um, what's the force uh, of gravity here to there, right? Um, from A to B. I think we can... FAB is equal to uh, G, and then MA, MB, all over D squared, all right? Okay, and then we have force of AC, that would be this direction. Um, that's just going to be G, M, A, M, C, all over 1.5 D squared. And then we would technically also have this F, A, D over here, which would be equal to G, M, A, M, D. And then this, this is just R squared. We're going to have to figure out what R is. We don't really know what R is. But the cool thing is, if we did know R, we'd be able to know X, right? And Y. Because if we if we know r, then guess what? X equals r cosine theta. We just have to figure out what theta is. And over here, this one is um, y equals r sine theta. Um, okay. So let's try to figure this out then. All we need to do is figure out. If we were to set um, the force of AD in the y direction to be equal to the force of AB, right, this force must equal this force. All right. So if that's the case, we know that the force AD is this way. It's not this way. And so we have to tweak it to this way, I think. Isn't that sine theta? Or rather, we could, we, could, we, could, we could maybe try to break this into components first. Isn't that just good if we were to put this in a vector form, which we know is going more like this direction, right? Then wouldn't it be F, A, D, cosine theta? Uh, here's the magnitude of that. And then um, I guess we can take that off. So the magnitude of that minus... F A D sine theta because obviously it's going to be negative for sine. Um, if we were to do this, then we can see that all we have to do is uh, force of A D is uh, uh, this. So this is this is the x direction. We can call this x or I suppose I. It will be a little bit more, a little bit more formal like this. So we got the I and the J. And because this is the I, we know that the I, F, A, D, cosine, theta, in the I direction is actually equal, that's this one. That's equal to this one. That's the C, A, F, F, A, C, and that's this one. Like this. And I guess, well, it's a little bit crisscrossed here. That's okay. Um, that's going to be equal to G M A M C over 1.5 D squared. Okay, that's this one. So now we have, because this is negative I, right? Cool. Now, obviously, we don't really care too much about these I's. But we just need to just to sort of think about that a little bit. Uh, let's just kind of erase them then. Okay. And so now we have this F A D cosine equal to the G. Um, let's also do this for sine. F A D sine theta uh, is 
equal to the G and the sign data is this side. So it's going to be M A M B over D squared. Now, um, uh, now our goal is to find data. We gotta find this data. In order to find our R, you know, we gotta be able to figure out what this data is. How are we supposed to know that? Well, I mean, we're given this I and this J. And if we know uh, the uh, Y and the X and the Y, then don't we know that um, tangent of theta is just equal to, you know, like Y over X or whatever. And it's opposite over adjacent, so. If we, had a, if we had a triangle like this, and we said, um, you know, here's y and here's x, then we know that the, and here's the theta, and that's opposite over adjacent, right? Um, so can we set this up? I think we can. Let's try to see. Um, the cosine is in the x direction, so that's this direction, it's x. And then the sine is in the, um, I guess that's the negative direction. It's like this. It's the y. So we can kind of set up a little triangle like this. I'm trying to make it on the left side so we get some more room. Right, okay. And um, uh, if that's the case, then this G M A M C over, you know, 1.5 D squared. I guess it's in the parentheses first. Uh, and then on the y side we have, and I guess it's not really like that, is it? It's more like, well, I think it's like that, isn't it? That, there's negative and there's that, yeah. Okay, here's G M A M B over D squared. And so we're really just trying to figure out this, or which data do we really need? Here's D. I'm pretty sure we need this data, right? So, cause, um, cause I mean, yeah, cause you start from the zero, you don't need this one, you need that one. Cause here's zero, and if we go to zero, this is the direction that it goes. So obviously that's theta, okay? <clears throat> and, um, if we know that's data, we can also draw a little line like this. And we know that uh, this is uh, y and this is x. And we can say that, uh, yeah, the tangent of, uh, the, the y is actually this one. Um, tangent of theta equals um, g m a m b over dy d squared. Um, that's the y, and divide that by the x, which is the cosine, here's g, m, a, m, c, uh, divided by 1.5, d squared, oh my goodness, g, m, a, m, c, over 1.5, d squared, all right, you could have also gotten the same answer by dividing these two equations divide equation one by equation two and you will get a tangent okay but i just wanted to show you how you can kind of also get it with this layout right here now once we have that we can see that the g's and the m's cancel and then we're basically left with this mb over d squared and then i'll just times 1.5 d squared over mc all right, um, that's gonna give us the tangent of theta. And if we were to plug this into a little calculator, we would get, get uh, that the tan of theta is equal to three over two, which means the arc tangent three over two Theta is actually equal to 56.31 degrees. And of course, that's going to be the negative. 
So yeah, there's data. Okay, good. So now that we've got that, uh, let's let's try to clear some space over here, I guess. And we know theta is 56.31. We also know from some of this stuff that oh, we're looking to find FAD cosine theta is equal to G MAMC over 1.5 D squared. And if we know theta, then we can actually plug that into the equation over here. Because um, I think we know this, uh, this one right here. I'll try to plug that into our calculator. Actually, I don't really need to. Like, we also know FAD sine theta before I get too hasty. Actually, no. Let's just get rid of this kind of clouding our space. Remember what FAD is. FAD is just this. So let's go G. Um, yeah, so fine. Let's put it over there. That's going to be equal to G uh, M A M D over R squared. And now here's a cosine theta. And it's just the same equation. Now we can see that G's will cancel out, M A will cancel out, and we're basically just left with M C over 1.5 d squared, I keep rewriting that wrong, equals uh, md over r squared cosine theta. Let's solve for r squared. I think that's what we need to know. We'll go ahead and multiply it on this side. And we'll basically just get that r squared equals, Break it down a little bit further. 1.5d squared equals md cosine theta. Put that 1.5d squared on this side and divide this by mc. All right, now we can figure out what r is. Just plug that in the calculator. Looks like I got this value r equals 0 0.2838. I believe that's correct. And then from there, remember that we had this graph that we drew out earlier. We had calculated that x equals r sine theta, or r cosine, and y is r sine. Let's do that. x equals r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. Um, now, it turns out that once we plug those into the calculator, we will get our fancy answers. So x equals cosine 57.31. Um, turns out that x is equal to um, 0 0.157, um, here's the meters, and then y is equal to um, 2, 3, 8, 2, 3, 8, 2, 3, 8, 2, 3, 8, well the y is equal to negative 0 0.236 meters. And then we have it. All right, that was a pretty rough problem. It's very confusing because we have to deal with both distances and the forces. So it's kind of crazy, but you can see how we worked this out. 